Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we will be talking about this truly shocking new poll coming from the Cook Political Report that shows Kamala Harris leading in all but two of the battleground states in 2024. She leads in Arizona by 4%, which only voted for Joe Biden in 2020 by 0 0.2. In Georgia, the race is tied. In Michigan, Kamala Harris leads by 2. In Pennsylvania, Kamala Harris leads by 5%. In Nevada, Donald Trump leads by 5% as well. In Wisconsin, Kamala Harris leads by 5 a huge a trend from 2020 towards the left. And maybe the most shocking of all, North Carolina in another poll flips blue. Harris is up in North Carolina by 2%. So, I mean, this is just stunning. This is a stunning poll. The Cook Political Report is a really highly respected um nonpartisan organization that does um you know characterize states and and makes predictions basically makes forecasts for elections again they are completely nonpartisan and they do yeah um electoral map projections now this is not their their official projection of course much more goes into that state trends other pollsters all of that but if the cook political report is showing all of this, and then you know it makes it a lot more, um, a lot more significant than coming from other pollsters. But wow, this would just produce a huge electoral landslide for Kamala Harris. Let's just put this on the electoral map. If we are, um, if Kamala Harris is really to win Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. She already wins the election with all the other blue states, which, of course, she presumably wins. That's it. That's all she needs. That's 270 electoral votes. That's all you need to win. That's the minimum amount, 270 to win. But this pollster also says, whoops, I have North Carolina red by instinct there. But this pollster says, Arizona goes blue. Georgia is tied. North Carolina goes blue, which puts her... At 297 electoral votes. And all Donald Trump takes is Nevada. Georgia's toss-up. So that's 297 to 225 for Trump. That is right near Joe Biden's 2020 margin. So we're approaching a point where it looks like um, Kamala Harris is matching Joe Biden's 2020 numbers. And 2020 wasn't an easy win. But it certainly wasn't a nail biter. Um, you know, the, the days leading up to yes, it took days to count the votes, but in the you know last days leading up to Joe Biden's projected victory, it really looked like he was going to win. It wasn't all that much of a nail biter. But this this matches that. I mean, if North Carolina is flipping, then I highly believe that Georgia would flip as well, and then that's 313 to 225 outpacing. Joe Biden's 306 to 232 four years ago. But Georgia is tied in this scenario. And, I mean, just wow. Just wow. Um, another North Carolina uh, flipping blue poll is huge. She wants more of those polls. If polls are continuing to say that she will flip North Carolina, that's exactly what she wants to see. But, I mean, just take a moment. Um, yes, she is about matching the electoral map numbers, the electoral vote numbers on the electoral map. But let's take a moment to look at the margins and how Kamala Harris is actually expanding on Joe Biden's lead in these states from 2020. For example, in 2020, uh, Joe Biden won the state of Arizona by, let's see if it'll load, I am in St. Lucia outside right now. So we don't have the best Wi-Fi. But I'll just tell you, I have it memorized. Uh, he won Arizona by 0.23% in the 2020 election. In Georgia, it is tied. Joe Biden won the state by 0.2. So, I mean, if it's only shifting 0.2% to the right, if the nation is shifting 0.2% to the right, Kamala Harris can absolutely live with that. But you see, the rest of the states, that's not quite the case in most. Michigan shifts 0.8% to the right because Joe Biden won it by 2.8 in 2020. Pennsylvania, Joe Biden only won by 1.2% in the 2020 election. In this poll, Kamala Harris leads by five. That's a 3.8 shift towards the left, towards Kamala Harris. Now, Nevada is quite an outlier uh, compared to the other state polls in this poll. 
Joe Biden won Nevada by 2.4 percent in the 2020 election, so it shifting 7.4 percent to the right. Trump winning by five. That is really, really odd. Looking at all the other state results from this poll, in Wisconsin, Kamala Harris is ahead by five. Joe Biden only won it by 0.6 percent. That's a 4.4 shift towards the left. And of course, in North Carolina. Donald Trump won the state by 1.2% in 2020. Kamala Harris winning it by 2% now. That's a 3.2% shift to the right. I guess my, my results here from 2020 still do not work. So, I mean, again, this would not be an easy victory, but it wouldn't be such a nail-biter. It wouldn't even be as much of a nail-biter as 2020 looking at these um state by state results maybe on the electoral map level but state by state results if she is winning easy victories in pennsylvania and wisconsin and it looks like she's going to flip north carolina and she's leading by a lot in arizona then we know on election day or on election night i should say how this vote is going to go but this does get um you know the kamala harris campaign Closer to a point of comfort that the Joe Biden campaign was in back in 2020. I do want to bring this up because, yes, she is leading in every poll. But I will mind you, in 2020, for example, in Arizona, uh, Joe Biden led by 2.6%. But an even better example would be a state like Wisconsin. We see on Wisconsin, on Election Day, the polls said that Joe Biden would win the state by 8.4%, which is a huge, huge, huge margin. Again, he only ended up winning the state by 0.6. So there is always the chance that polls can way overestimate a candidate. And on presidential levels, it is typically the Democrat, especially in battleground states. So the point is, Kamala Harris is probably not going to win Wisconsin by 5%. But she wants to have this margin consistently in polling and her average to be around 5% or more, right? She'd like it if it got up to 8.4% like it was for Joe Biden. But she wants her margin to consistently be around here because she needs room. She needs wiggle room. Again, Joe Biden won it by 8.4. The polls were 7.8% underestimating Donald Trump in 2020. Now imagine if the polls said Biden would win by five, and she and uh, the polls overestimated Joe Biden by 7.8%. Then we would have seen Donald Trump take the win in Wisconsin. Exactly not what the Biden campaign wanted to see, especially when he's leading the state, where when he was leading the state, by 5%. So again, the point is polls can overestimate. Democrats typically it's typically Democrats by quite a lot and maybe it's different it, it is you know in the realm of possibility that it is different this time and the polls are either pretty accurate maybe overestimating Kamala Harris a little bit or maybe even overestimating Donald Trump just a little bit but you know still Kamala Harris wants um, to see her margins nearing the 2020 margins of polls for Joe Biden. See, in Michigan, he was leading by 8%. He won the state by 3 That's a 5-point underestimation of Donald Trump in the state. So Kamala Harris definitely likes to see these numbers because they're going in the right direction, but she wants to see them even higher. I mean, polls said that, polls said on average, Biden would win in Georgia. Um, it was extremely close. It was just about 50-50. She doesn't want to see a tie. She wants to see uh, herself at somewhere, uh, any amount ahead on average. She wants to see herself ahead. So truly a sh really shocking poll that does indicate really a Harris landslide for today's, um, you know, for today's politics in these divided times. This really does approach a landslide election for Kamala Harris. It appears that Kamala Harris is more and more favored day by day as we get new polling information. She is more and more favored to win this 2024 presidential election. So thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe down below. We're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers before election day. So if you could help me get there, that would be great. Again, thank you all for watching this video, and I will see you all next time.